So here I thought it was going to be an easy evaluation. I was going to be able to eat some tuna and tell you which one I liked. And it would be a great first video about which tuna you should be buying. Boy, was I wrong. Welcome everybody to episode one of Homemade Health. And today we are going to be looking at tuna fish with my trusty sidekick Coco here, although I think I'm gonna have to kick her out of the, the frame. So I didn't even know what chunk line tuna was and I decided to do some research and lo and behold, I found out so many things about tuna fish. So I'm here to help you make a smart choice in 2020 and perhaps some of the things you should be looking for. So we're gonna dive right in. So before we go through the cans, we're gonna talk about a bit how we're gonna rate them, as well as um, a bit of information that we kinda wanna know or reference back to. So to start off, of course, light tuna, skipjack tuna, is just the, uh, the small boy fish and those are caught in a big old net. That method is called purse signing and makes up more than 40% of the tuna market, especially for the canned stuff, since a lot of skipjack goes into canned tuna. Albacore tuna are a much larger fish and as such are caught on hooks, either by a long line strung out behind a boat or else by hand with a fishing pole. And that is almost 20% of the market because about 11% is the long line and 8% is caught on the pole in line. With both methods, there are some bycatch, which is what that means is catching different types of tuna, you know, accidentally picking up a, a turtle or a shark is because we want to eliminate that. So when you look at purse signing, it has a pretty low, oh, my cat's coming. It has a pretty low bycatch rate, um, but I don't know if that's off of quantity or weight because when they're scooping up such a large amount, even at 1%, it's unclear whether if that's, you know, because if you scoop up 500 fish, 500 pounds, you know, just 1% is, is it five or is it five pounds? So it's kind of interesting, but there is a method of purse signing, and that is using fads. So a fad is just a floating object. It can be man-made, like they can deploy it, or else it's a natural one, like driftwood or some sort of material floating on the water. And tuna are attracted to that, and they kind of congregate around it. And using fads actually accounts for more than 65% of the overall fish caught um, in purse signing is around fads. And that is what raises the bycatch up to 1%. Otherwise, it's pretty low. And actually, I read a statistic that it was closer to 9% in the Atlantic Ocean, probably due to uh, just, you know, maybe more of the other species and such kind of intermixing and hanging around those fads, you know, really raises the, uh, the bycatch. So that's not great to have. With long line, they kind of sit in the water for quite a while because you want to fill up all of those hooks before you start dragging it in, like if you've ever seen the TV shows. They actually have a read up to a 20% bycatch, which seems really high, but then again, you know, when you're looking at percentages and is it quantity or weight, you're not you're dragging in a lot bigger fish, so it's not such a large quantity. So, you know, it's hard to say whether the uh, bycatch is really more you know, if it's going to cause more harm or not. There are ways to help that. And that would be to have, they have circle hooks, which makes it harder to snare a turtle, which is important. Um, I don't know if there's like any anti-shark things. There's some sort of way to help them, but I didn't read any specific examples. And then you, there's streamers usually on the line because I guess even seabirds can get caught up in it whether at some point, so. 
definitely trying to uh, improve that or finding a reputable source is important. And pull in line is arguably the best just simply because when you have a bunch of people out there fishing the school you know you're usually catching the right fish and I believe they can use barbless hooks that help you know make sure if you catch something that you're not aiming for you can hopefully release it and everything will be just peachy the one thing that I noticed was there are, you know, they're using bait fish, of course, to attract the tuna. So you do have to kind of watch the ecosystem of your bait fish as well as the tuna. So with a very brief introduction to the type of fishing methods and the type of fish, we're going to be taking a look at the companies and what sort of things they employ. And to start off, what most of them have in common is that they have the dolphin safe symbol, which was a big issue back in 1980 to 1990. A video surfaced of fisheries, or fishing boats more, using dolphins to herd the tuna around while they were scooping up it in the net, and a whole bunch of Dolphins were ending up in the nets and being killed as the bycatch and so all the companies and people there was a huge boycott for them to Stop that practice and that's sort of where the tuna safe came is that now most boats doing the purse signing have an observer on the boat to um, To watch for that and the other thing that all of these companies are doing is being partnered up with foundations and other conservations like the World Wildlife Foundation to help them move towards the sustainability as well as with the human rights of the fisheries and fishing boats. Back in 2014-2015 there was quite a bit of scandal and sort of almost like slave labor being used on the boats and just really poor conditions. So all the companies have, again, put forward a commitment to working on the sustainability and the human rights efforts. And so all the companies are working towards improving that. And it's very hard, you know, to track where your fish comes from, because sometimes it changes hands a lot. Um, but trying to get rid of all of that murkiness and work towards finding reputable fisheries is uh, the direction everyone's heading right now. So we're going to start right off. So I would like to preface that I grabbed my tuna from some of the bigger chains. So I went to Albertsons and I went to a Kroger and I got their affiliated cans as well as anything that should be seen in most markets. I'm in more rural Northwest, so I don't have a Publix, but I would have perhaps liked to uh, grab something from there as well. So we'll probably start right in with Bumblebee. And I always see Bumblebee as being the face of tuna. Eaten it, seen it since I was a kid. So to me, it's pretty iconic. It was interesting while I was researching into uh, how far they've come on their sustainability. So they are the co-founders of ISSF, which is International Seafood Sustainability Foundation. And that really is a, a great scientific area that monitors um, the different fishing waters and their byproduct and sustainability which is um, really nice information to have. And so they're doing a lot of sharing and they do have a set of values. I couldn't quite find a very strict guideline in my digging, but they seem to do have, you know, a certain amount of standards, of course. Um, the only problem that I see with Bumblebee is when I looked at their 2018 sustainability report, it shows as having 86% from non-certified fisheries. 
uh, and only 1% was from MSC certified fisheries, and we will talk about what that means here just at the end. And they also have 55% from non-ISSF participating companies. So even their co-founded companies, they don't pull all that much from them. They do say that the fisheries that they use are up to their standards, but they don't necessarily participate. So overall, there's a lot more they could improve on, and really, I just don't see, you know, a whole lot of great things or any promises, really, to improve. Much further than that, I haven't seen any open communication in that direction. So they're more out of, like, a 2 out of 5 is where they're shooting right now. Now, the next big company is Chicken of the Sea. And they are, and this is actually a salmon that we're gonna try out as well, throw that in the test. Because they did almost a 180 as of recent. So in 2017, Greenpeace really went after them and they you know, signed an agreement in becoming more sustainable. And so far, what they want is to have at least 75% coming from the uh, MSC certified fisheries. And that means a third party organization that evaluates fisheries. And I guess it's an incredible 18 month certification to go through and they're the Marine Steward Council, and it's best guaranteed globally for sustainability. And so they ensure that the, the fish stocks are sustainable, they minimize environmental impacts, and also improve the management of the fishery. And so Chicken of the Sea either needs it to be that MSC certified, or else a FIP, which is a Fishery Improvement Project, and that is sort of like stepping stones to get to the uh, MSC certification. So they have a, a high goal for 2020. The only information I was able to pull from their sustainability report, as it's only been a few years and they're really kicking up the gears, is that 14% of their global tuna production is from MSC companies, and that doesn't seem very high, um, but of course in the Europe, I, it's, I believe it's over 80%, so they're certainly working on it, and from what I can see, they've really come quite a long way. So they're going to be doing yearly reports, so they're definitely one to watch, and they get a solid 4 out of 5. Next in the list for the big three would be Starkist. And I have a little, little can for this one. So, there's nothing really on the can, you know, of course, we have, just like the others, Dolphin Safe and Wild Caught, which is, basically means all tuna. On their site, they have some generic information about their, uh, you know, sustainability. They might be partnered with someone, but I haven't seen any real numbers or real goals. And so right now, they are kind of at the end of the pack for the big three. And really are just coming in with a one out of five. And definitely not a company I would recommend right now. They're just not on, on top of the game. Next, we are going to jump to the in-house companies, such as Kroger and the Safeway Albertsons branding. So with Kroger, I will openly admit that I am fond of it. I like their company. Most of the time I'm at their grocery stores. So I will preface with that. Um, and then I'll dig into the details and you can also make your informed decision and I'll try not to let it influence me. And as such, when I dug in, what they are shooting for is by 2020 to have 90% of their seafood volume coming from the MSC certified companies. As of now, of course, there can 
continuing to have 100% of their shelf-stable tuna come from the ISSF participating areas, so to make sure that it's sustainable. In their most recent sustainability report, they got another four fisheries up to that certified level, and they are sitting at 75% of their volume are MSC certified, and this was their 2019 report. So they're definitely on track to hit their 2020 goals, and I'm sort of excited to uh, see see what happens. And of course, they do have you know a couple different brands, and their Simple Truth brand is um, both their organic or their more naturally sourced. It does have the certification and all of their tuna is caught pole in line, which is one of the most, you know, the, the more reputable way. Next we have Safeway, which is, which is our Signatures Kitchen for their main brand and their isn't a whole lot of information on their cans, which is fine. They do have a slightly better brand, of course, the Open Nature for their their natural one. And um, I did pretty quick research. I will say that I didn't do as much digging as I decided to choose you know, more options or make sure I got a, a decent selection sort of towards the end. Uh, but generally what I saw was that they are partnered to do the, uh, with the United Nations SDG, which is the, or they do meet the United Nations Sustainability Development Goal. And they're working with the Seafood Task Force to work on the sustainability. But again, I wasn't able to easily find any type of report or way to get more information about how they're improving past that point. And as such, I would say they also get a 2 out of 5. And I didn't rate Kroger. Kroger's 3 out of 5. Next up, we'll drive more into the smaller companies and the more high-end tuna, if you will. And our first one on the list is going to be Sustainable Seas. Uh, a lot of these tunas are hard-packed into the cans, which we'll see. So this one, of course, is 100% pole in line. You'll see that more and more as we get going. They're already drained, so you you don't actually, you know, you just open it up and you're good to go, which is kind of kind of nice. It says that it's, you know, of course, skipjack is the lowest in mercury. And there is a part where we do talk a little bit on mercury levels. And that it's caught in the North Pacific or the Maldives, which is important. Because like I mentioned, of course, it's not so much pole in line. But in the Atlantic, you get a little more issues with bycatch and I think sustainability. So it's always nice that it gives generalized information already just on the can without needing to do anything more. And for sustainability C's, they go for the best choice or good alternative. And that is based off of the MBA SW, which is the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch. And what those companies do is sort of like the ISSF, is that they track the waters and the sustainability, but also the fishing method and the environmental impact. So most of their best choice is going to be just the pole and line. And of course, they don't approve of using fads in their purse signing. So super solid company, I believe. I mean, I would want to say that most of their stuff comes from MSCs, but I didn't see anything directly on there. And some people don't put the certification. So they're generally, uh, you know, four out of five because they do a very good job, but I haven't dug very deep. Next would be Wild Planet. And this one has a, a super solid reputation. And it was kind of weird that 
when I dig into these companies, there's a lot of them that don't put that they're the MSC certified. But I suppose some of that comes in the in the package deal. So again, in the ingredients, they do let us know that it's caught in Central or North Pacific Ocean, you know, processed in, they go through Thailand, as do many other of the tuna companies. What was interesting about this one being that it, uh, it says it's the omega-3 is retained because unlike most tuna, instead of being instead of being steamed and then canned and then cooked again, it is just slow cooked once so that it doesn't go through, you know, multiple cooking processes where it loses some of those nutrients. So I'm excited to give this a try. Again, they use the MBASW standards, so they have the best practice or good alternative. Solid company. We'll probably also do those four out of five. Last and certainly not least, is gonna be Safe Catch. The only one who doesn't like Safe Catch is the camera. There we go. So, Safe Catch is a pretty recent company, actually. Uh, I want to say closer to 2015 they got started. And what they really boast and run their company on is that every tuna is tested to have a point one per million on their mercury limit which you know if you are worried about fish you know mercury can certainly be a concern so we'll take a look at the uh, at the can and then we'll talk a bit about their uh, the mercury so let's see again we have fish sustainably caught in the pacific or indian oceans packed in thailand these ones actually have a, a few new fancy pictures on them. Of course, just mostly for for diet and such. But they are American Pregnancy Associate. The, it's the official tuna due to the low mercury. And with that, the FDA will run over some of their stats as well. So they also run off of the MBASW standards. It was interesting, so they don't have, you know, the sticker on there again, but they require a certificate from all of their their fish that comes in to have a no-fad devices. So it actually has to be, like, certified or observed that there was no-fad devices uses. All of their abacore, pole in line, and, uh, again, they're also slow-cooked. So they've definitely jumped right up there with some of the more fancy tunas and they also boast that low mercury which we are going to talk about. So the FDA for tuna actually has a limit of one part per million and from what I read about the limits on mercury is more on a weekly base because they you know most people don't eat seafood every day. The example they gave was for a 132 pound woman, which I'm, you know, I'm close enough to that, is 42 micrograms a week. And then to look at some generic numbers, if an albacore tuna had a 0.35 parts per million, if you eat six ounces, which is the recommended or the average dose that is 60 micrograms and you know light tuna the skipjack is much lower in mercury so if that's a concern for you maybe in our taste test finding a good skipjack tuna or rather than a albacore might be important an average being closer to 0 0.118 that in a six ounce servings, which is probably going to be closer to two cans in a week, is 20 uh, micrograms, which is a fair bit lower. So a person like me, who has been eating a lot of tuna lately, should probably choose a good uh, light tuna rather than the, 
albacore, but we'll have to see how the taste, see if it's worth the uh, potential for mercury poison. And so what I was reading on their stuff is even though they have a uh, point one limit, and of course that's only for the skipjack, on average their skipjack is testing around point zero four, which means it's obviously going to be fairly safe for pregnant women to consume as you know that's one of the big concerns and why they really wanted to uh sort of make this company was so that you know we could avoid mercury poison because i think one of the owners his mom got mercury poison and the other owner or co-founder i believe his wife wanted tuna and couldn't eat it while pregnant so they're really working on that Let's see, the average mercury on their albacore tests around 0.2, and their limit is 0.38. And they say they look at all size fishes, so they're not only just picking up the smaller fish. The only thing I could possibly worry about is making sure all that other tuna made it to another supplier. As much of it is within FDA requirements, and would certainly be wasteful for it to go down. But I have a strong feeling that they have pretty good practices and it might be worth looking deeper into, but for now, we are gonna go ahead and give them a five because having that added mercury, I think really just, you know, puts them a step above. So that was a pretty basic rundown, both of what you need to know for buying tuna, and even some of the companies that you'll see on the shelves. So I wasn't quite sure how the breakdown for scoring these would go, but I ended up setting it up so that sustainability had a score of 5, as it's the most important, and then I actually put the cost with a score of 4 next, because um, I think it's really about balancing the cost as well as what uh, sustainability choices you can support. And then of course taste, I actually bumped down only to three because while some of the fancy tunas definitely tasted good and albacore tuna is generally gonna be better tasting than the chunk light, I don't think it has that big of an impact that it needs to have such a heavy hand when it comes to the, the final score. So of course that puts it at a score out of 12, and we'll jump right into that. So I sort of knew the tasting would be uh, a little hard to do, so I ended up just making a little quick video that I'll show you here. I gotta say, this is frightening. The amount of tuna that I have here is ridiculous. We got some visitors. Coco's gonna do that taste test for us. Maybe a little drier? No, they're, they're both dry. Looks really nice. Um, you know, they're really well put together. It's like chicken almost. Oh my gosh. Definitely wasn't appealing when I opened the can. Be on the broth and the salt. So really, maybe I should just evaluate different vegetable broths. Slightly more crumbly. It's just not doing it for me. How to describe it? Ooh, yep. It's a lot drier. I think I'll have mercury poisoning by the end of this video. It's almost not dry. Which basically means this whole video is dry. It looked a bit more like a hockey puck. I thought it was going to use this whole kind. So, just a few more here. No, I gotta say, the look on that one was incredible. It's kind of chewy, you know. It's also kind of dry. The tuna, closer to how it should be. I mean, except for like fresh tuna, because. Mm. Can't compare with like delicious raw tuna. Get another piece, and they have brought their claws to bear. Go oh, away. Ah, jeez. Okay. They look less like miscellaneous pieces and more like various pieces of actual tuna. If you can stand it, there's like those mini microscopic, you know, cartilage bones running through it and you feel like you're eating one, but you're not really sure. But it really just throws me for a doozy. We'll finish in the conclusion. 
Um, so down below will be a breakdown of each can sustainability as well as the, you know, the cost. And there's a little bit on it for either my first impressions or what I kind of liked about that can if you want to, you know, learn more about each one. But for now, we're just going to jump right into our winners. So we'll start off with the budget one. So if you're not going to change anything, you're just going to keep buying tuna. I would say support Chicken of the Sea Chunk Light. Um, you know, none of the lower end tunas really hit that many marks on the sustainability, but Chicken of the Sea being such a huge producer and is constantly moving towards the right goals is enough of a reason for me to switch from even just buying Bumblebee for that budget buster to fill up your pantry. Next would be the top scoring light tuna. And that one's actually going to be the Simple Truth Chunk Light. Um, it honestly hits perfect marks in its sustainability. As far as taste goes, it actually, Kroger and the Simple Truth, they seem to run a little drier. If you're making it in dishes and you're not just eating it plain, I really don't think you'll notice anything. It puts it a little expensive. I think it was, for me at least, $2 per can, which seems extreme, but that's still a much lower price than just buying albacore tuna that doesn't really have any sort of sustainability. So in my opinion, it sits really at the highest. It is unfortunate that it's a Kroger exclusive, but it just hits such top marks that I can't really tie it with any other company that has a product that would be in more stores. However, the albacore tuna is a little bit different of a story, as both the chicken of the sea as well as the simple truth hit really high marks. The only difference would be that the chicken of the sea doesn't have their albacore caught um, pole in line. So while it's not perfect, it's definitely a super solid choice. And if you're only eating it every so often, albacore tuna is a perfect upgrade. And of course, again, with that simple truth being a store brand, it gets a little bit better pricing and hitting all five marks on sustainability. As an added bonus, it was one of the few tunas that when you opened it up, it looked a lot more like the expensive tuna, where it looks like a solid cut rather than the scraps. And then of course, for the top of the line, I'm actually going to choose Safe Catch over Wild Planet. They both had a very good taste. Um, it wasn't quite as epic as I was expecting, but it is just canned tuna. And having the extra testing on the Mercury is far more important when it's a very similar cost to the Wild Planet. If you look at the document, you'll see that they are not MSC certified, as far as I can tell. They, of course, run off of that Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch, which rates it based on how it's fished. But if you go to their website for, like, the Seafood Watch, they actually recommend that you pick companies that are MSC certified, and none of those cans have it plainly labeled or on the can that they actually do source from MSC certified fisheries. So I can't give them that full marks in the sustainability because it's either unclear or perhaps not even fully up to standards, even at the high price of it. Then I will throw a few more honorable mentions. Um, the first one, even though it scored low, mostly because it didn't have any salt, Sustainable Seas, which I didn't find at Kroger, but I did see it at Albertson, so I'm not sure if it's an exclusive or what the case was, but it was a whole dollar cheaper than the Wild Planet, and that was at a store where prices tend to run a little higher. Seeing such a gourmet tuna at a fairly reasonable price, comparatively, is really nice to see, so that might be my best Albert Albertson's choice over the safe catch. And then, of course, for the outliers I had brought onto the test. Um, canned salmon. Definitely a good choice for those who might be worried about mercury, as salmon, of course, is very low in mercury. However, I got a real textural difference, where it felt like there was more of that bones and skin that you might get kind of in a sardine, even though it said it didn't have any. So it did taste fairly decent once I kind of got used to it, but it definitely wasn't for me, and I would much rather eat salmon once a week to get a better fatty fish in my diet. The next would be in olive oil. 
I had one on the test, uh, mostly just to taste it, to be honest. Uh, it was also one of those ones where, you know, after eating all that plain tuna, it was kind of like a shock, and I wasn't sure if I liked it at first, but it kind of started getting to where it was, like, really tasty. Uh, so definitely recommend it, like, I mean, maybe if you just like eating tuna by itself, that could be the best choice. To me, in the end, it's still a little too high in calories, and its price isn't great. Perhaps if you didn't want your tuna packed in sort of a vegetable broth. And if you do go that route, of course, I will say that Chicken of the Sea, their Genova brand, it is said to have launched fully MSC certified. And so the Genova brand, I believe, would be the best option, although I didn't have it in my test or really explore that too extensively. So in the end, I picked a couple winners. Of course, as you raise the standards up, you'll find a different one to meet your needs. But I tried to pick ones so that anybody buying tuna fish for their families can start making better choices in 2020, as well as just being able to know more about the issues surrounding it. My advice would be to kind of think about the sustainability and where you really want to put your money and your support, and then take a look at the taste. Some people really prefer that albacore, over that chunk light. So I definitely recommend giving that a try and seeing if you notice any difference. And while mercury in your fish is both a scary topic, but also one that sometimes you don't always think about. So also take a look at how often you eat tuna in the week and what choice would be the best for you. It was uh, quite a journey doing this first video and hopefully you guys liked it. I tried to keep a bit more personality. I didn't want to do too much voiceover or too much facts as that's not really the kind of channel I want to create. It was a lot of fun doing all this research and learning new things. It's definitely pretty cool. Uh, for the most part, I plan to do a lot more looking at recipes and healthy choices in the more simple aspects for now, uh, but I certainly wouldn't mind doing another research project one day. It's a touch ambitious to be saying you can subscribe for more, but I do plan on flavoring all these tunas and creating some recipes that are quick and easy, you know, to throw in your lunch and really up your tuna game. So do look forward to that, and I will see you guys next time.